the relationship between cerebral hypoperfusion and the actual experience of brain-related symptoms is becoming more and more well-known, more and more accepted. We're seeing published studies that are happening in the field of ME-CFS, in dysautonomia, in POTS, and orthostatic hypotension, where we're starting to coalesce now around this idea that, hey, when people express these symptoms of feeling brain fog, of like, I can't think, I can't remember, I'm getting blurry, I'm getting dizzy, that we're seeing this correlation between these patterns of hypoperfusion. And for me, that's super hopeful because now it allows us to start looking at the, act, the problem that we're trying to solve. Now, does that mean for everybody it happens the same way and there's one solution to you know, hypoperfusion as a problem? No. But what it does mean is we have a place to start from a measurement point and then we can work backwards to figure out why isn't that perfusing? Is it because we're having changes in you know, arteries of the brain? Are we having obstruction of vessels going into the brain? Are we seeing changes in barrel reflexes or output of the heart? So there's all these other things that can influence it. So once we know like this is a thing that's happening, we also then have to not get too like locked in on hypoperfusion and start to go, well, but what is causing it? What is, what is the reason that it's happening? And then being able to dive backwards into the problem solving and figure that out. So step one, can we measure that the perfusion changes? That's pretty cool because we can usually measure correlate subjective changes or symptom changes that happen with that. And then what's cool is if we can change the physiology underneath that, can we change the hypoperfusion? And then we see the symptoms start to get better. That's the fun part. And that's the part I encourage everybody to look forward to, especially as we're moving to a place where people have more access to this type of testing.